Well, I'm joined by Jonathan Doog, who's chairman of the Western Front Association for Lincolnshire and North Lincolnshire. Jonathan, uh, tomorrow's the 1st of July. It's a date that years ago was a big day in Madari. It's the anniversary of the first day of the Battle of the Somme, 58,000 British casualties. And there were people from Lincolnshire involved, weren't there, on that day? Oh, very much so, Nigel. It's uh, the most bloodiest day in the history of the British Army, even to this day. And the resonance of the 1st of July is that it was really the first time that the Kitchener volunteers, um, the lads who had responded to Lord Kitchener's you know, your country... Civilians, basically. Exactly. Lads yeah. who had been civilians n not much more than a year before um, went into battle on that morning and, uh, as you say, some 58,000 British soldiers became casualties in one day. And um, you, many people have heard of the so-called Powell's Battalions, the lads that joined up from communities and factories. And Lincolnshire's own uh, Powell's Battalion was the 10th Battalion of the County Regiment and they were known as the Grimsby Chums. And they went into action... Um, at a place called La Boisselle on the Somme, where a huge mine was detonated at just before 7.30 in the morning. And then there was a great rush to try to occupy that mine crater before the Germans could get there. And of about 850 lads of the Grimsby chums that went into action that morning, uh, two-thirds of them were casualties within the first hour or so. Yeah, as I say, it doesn't have the same resonance because it slipped beyond the edge of living memory, but we certainly shouldn't forget it, and I know that's what you and the Western Front Association do. Now, the tank this project, this, the landship project as it originally was, how is it that it was Lincoln that became the birthplace of this machine, which arguably gave us victory and brought an end to the war? Uh, yes. Um, as early as the spring of 1915, the year before the Somme, the British found that with a sufficient weight of artillery bombardment, they could break into the German front line. But what they didn't have was the strength or the, the, the tools to break through and into the open country beyond. So the Germans were very good at counter-attacking. So by the time you'd broken into the German first line of defences, and we're not talking about single lines of trenches. You know, as the war went on, the German defences were up to three, four miles uh, deep. There were acres of barbed wire entanglements. So what was required was a tool to not only break into the German defences, but eventually to break through them. And that is where the tank came in. And although the tank is very much associated with the army, it was actually a naval idea. Uh, the, the sort of man behind it, as ever, is Winston Churchill, who was first Lord of the Admiralty. Yeah. And um, the first designs for the tanks, why the, 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 the body of a tank is known as a hull, uh, and so on, because it was all naval terminology. And um, William Foster and co... Um, were already building tracked agricultural vehicles. Because it's Lincolnshire. Be because it's Lincolnshire, big agricultural county, and so yeah. the, the sort of knowledge was here in the city. And um, William Tritton, who at the time was managing director of Foster's, and a chap called uh, Walter Wilson, who was a lieutenant uh, given a, a rank, he had actually been in the Navy pre-war. Uh, he was uh, the designer. And um, it was such a secret project that they were ensconced in a, in a small room which you can still go and visit today in the White Hart Hotel up on the Bale near, um, near Lincoln Cathedral and the first tanks were designed there tested on the common in Lincoln and the Mark I tank the one that had the two steering wheels on the back which uh, yeah. made them very unreliable originally it was that first Mark I Lincoln built tank that went into action on the Somme in September of 1916.